So thanks, thanks for those of you that are are on. Hey Mike, thanks for joining. Well, uh, we're just gonna run through our encore barrels. I get a lot of questions, a lot of the same questions I've been saying for a long time. I'm gonna do a how-to video, um, so I thought I'd make it a live event and uh, just go through uh, through everything you get with the gun or with the replacement barrel when it comes in the mail, and then how how to set it up. So I guess with that, we'll jump right into it. So the uh, the first step, or the first thing you got to choose is your breech plug system. We've got either the, the shotgun primer, the 209, or the, the LRMP. Uh, you don't, if you change your mind later on, all you're doing is buying a different plug because the, the plugs both head space out the same, completely interchangeable. Uh, the 209, uh, up until the four or five months ago, you had to use a tool uh, to pop the 209 primer out, but we've actually uh, designed a uh, an ejector that works with the 209 primer so you can either whether it's the module system or the 209 you can use an ejector uh, for popping either the primer out or the module so that that's no longer a trade-off uh, between the two systems hey John hey Bill uh, as far as uh, performance of the two uh, with the 209 uh, you're gonna need to use a veggie wad it's uh, little fiber card like this right here you push it start it with your thumb and then seat it with the the bullet uh, when you seat the bullet with the ramrod it's a little bit of a pain to get through the brake uh, if you're going that way if, it, if you have an unbrake gun uh, then it, you know, it's right there it's no big deal uh, to get it started hey Greg uh, as far as uh, performance the the LRMP system, it's a lot shorter distance from the primer to the powder. You're going to get more speed, probably 50 to 75 feet per second with the same powder charge. Uh, you also don't need the wad uh, with the LRMP system, so that, that's one less thing to, to worry about. Uh, with the 209, uh, when you shoot it, there's a, there's a gap. We call it the flame channel, which is there's a tungsten carbide bushing at the end of the plug here. The primer obviously goes in here. Uh, which means there's about that much of a gap uh, from primer to the bushing. Call that the flame, like I said, call that the flame channel. It'll eventually fill up with carbon as you shoot it. So every 30 shots or so, you want to come in with a 964 drill bit and drill that carbon out. You don't, you don't need to remove the bushing. Uh, you can run the drill bit right up against it. You're not going to hurt it. But like I said, every 25, 30 shots, come in there with a, with a drill bit and get that carbon out of there. Uh, let's see. So let's just jump right into setting up the sizing die. Uh, actually, take a step back. So the extractors, uh, we came up with a neat system, Dylan and I at uh, MGM. We figured out if you do a little uh, relief cut, let me show you here, maybe it's easier on this barrel, a little relief cut right in front of the lug. Uh, you can see it right there uh, in the video. The, the action opens just a hair further, and that allows us to take the ejector straight out. So we, we put a set screw right here that holds the ejector in place. So breech plug goes in. I'll just show you how to put it. Actually, I'm not going to put the breech plug in because we're going to set up a sizing die, and we want to be able to push the bullets through. But the ejector goes in like that little set screw right there and and your ejectors in so if you wanted to pull your breech plug you just take the ejector out and then come in with your socket and pull the plug you don't have to tear the gun all the way apart so super handy these are these are replacement barrels Mike are 45 cal smokeless rated Encore barrels. Uh, so that, that's how we put the ejector in. Anyway, so setting up the sizing die, I like to take the brake off so I have easy access to the muzzle. Uh, here's our sizing die. So we're smooth sizing. I'm just using a LE hand press for that. Uh, these MGM preferred blanks have been running about a 15 typically on the sizing die. But that's there's no guarantee. It's just a it's a ballpark estimate. But I'm going to go straight there and see see how close we are. So we 
turn it to 15 on the dial. If I miss something, just shoot shoot a question on here and I'll jump back to it. I like to run the bullets through three times. One time, you're a little more prone to spring back your regularities and sizing. So, so run it through the die just like that three times. Then we'll we'll see where we're at fit wise. So actually, that's that's really close. So you see how that went in, nice and easy. Thumb pressure. It's just a hair tight, but it should push through uh, fine. So got the three piece rod. So yeah, that that is a little tight, but you don't want to have to pound it through like this. But that's really close. If it if it was too tight. Uh, you just come around from the breech size and pop that bullet right out at the muzzle and, and bring it down a little bit. So just a hair tight. I mean, that was really close, but we are on the clean bore, so we'd, we'd want it pretty easy because you take two or three shots, that, that bore is going to follow follow up, and your, reloading, your loading resistance is going to go up. So I'm going to go two of the little hash marks tighter. It's right there, so we're on 17. Since the bullet's already gone through three times, we're almost there. I just do it, do it a couple of times on subsequent passes like that when I'm getting the die close. So that's that's pretty much where we want to be. Yeah, nice easy. You got resistance all the way down, and that's all there is to it. So at this point, you put the plug in. We'll just run through that step now. So the set screw comes out ejector comes out we'll put the uh, LRMP plug in we'll anti-seize on it I, I like these Loctite anti-seize sticks uh, ASG043 that is the, the arrowhead part number on those if, if you want them they're, they're super handy in all right there we go so torque as far as torque spec on the plug very little gas actually makes it back to the back of the plug so it, it's just snug you know I don't know what the, that was probably like 30 inch pounds uh, that's plenty uh, so the plugs in put the Ejector back in and the set screw. Obviously, you could be doing all this with the gun fully assembled. It's just a little easier to do this while the, the guns broke apart. Alright, put the brake back on. So we'll go just go over the loading sequence again. We got the breech plug in. At this point, uh, we take the funnel, pour our pre-measured powder load in, pre-weighed since we're we're smoke with smokeless. Smokeless is always weighed. Uh, if it was a 209 gun, we'd put the veggie wad in at this point, get it just started in the muzzle, and then we'd come back with the bullet and push it all down at once. If it was the module system, it'd just be powder and bullet, and we'd seed it, and we're we're ready to prime. Uh, let's see, as far as ramrods go, with our new, this three-port uh, tack radial brake we use, we were able to, the, the radial brake we used to use, the old style one, went about an inch and a half, or sorry, three quarters of an inch uh, further than this one. Uh, so with the, the th this three-port tack radial, you can use an attached ramrod. Uh, with the smokeless load, you're, you, you are only going to end up with about a quarter inch of rod. Uh, sticking out of the barrel when you go to load uh, but if, if you're okay with that you can use an attached rod otherwise you can use one of our our three-piece rods of course which are I think you saw me using these but they snap together real nice uh, another advantage of the three-piece rod is it does does come with the bore guide so you don't have to worry about barfing up your uh, your muzzle 
when you're loading. Uh, so, Alan, uh, I guess this is what we're going through. You can buy the, the smokeless barrels through the website. They're all stainless steel, uh, so we don't uh, uh, do not do any blued ones. But, it, I mean, it's no big deal mi mixing and matching a stainless steel barrel on a blued frame, uh, right? Let's see. So oh, another nice upgrade you can do is these uh, Bellum uh, spring kits. Uh, the the locking lugs on the barrels come straight from MGM with the the upgraded lugs, so you don't need to change that spring out. But the trigger springs, uh, the the factory Encore frames come with the, it's like it's it's high. It's like a seven pound trigger pull. Uh, if you if you do the spring set, which uh, it takes about 15 20 minutes to do it the first time, uh, that'll drop your trigger pull down to a nice two and a half three pounds. A good good hunting weight. All right, so let's uh, let's go through priming the modules. So, I've been not as uh, diligent as I should be about wearing safety glasses, but it's just reading some PRS shooter had a whole primer tray go off in his face hand priming uh, cases last week, I think. So, safety glasses are always a good thing. Uh, this is the RCBS Universal hand primer. Uh, you don't need a shell holder. It's got spring-loaded adjustable prongs here. I like this one. It's it's definitely the the best one I've used. It's a little more expensive than the Lee hand primer. The the Lee also will work, uh, but I I use the uh, RCBS Universal. So you're just squeezing the primers in like that. We'll do a couple of them. it is all right so let's uh, we'll pretend that we've poured the powder put the bullet down in this gun so it's loaded but you can look through and see daylight so I know it's not loaded uh, in reality uh, that's a really good way to check before you load if you're not sure of course you always want to have the witness mark on your ramrod to double check uh, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble not using the witness mark but it is it's so easy uh, to look through an Encore barrel, uh, make sure it's it's empty. You can see the daylight there, bolt action, pull the bolt, look through. Like I said, you always want to have that witness mark on your ramrod. Uh, if you don't know what a witness mark is, we, let's run through that quick. Uh, we're, so we've looked through, know the gun's empty, we pour our powder in, put a bullet in, and we're seating it for the first time. And so the ramrod, you know, we feel it seat on the powder, it stops right there, whether it's paint or tape or I, on these black anodized rods I like to take a file and just spin them and engrave it but make some sort of mark to where when the gun's loaded it comes down and stops at that witness mark so if you were double loaded you know your witness mark would be uh, it would probably be up here so way way off of where you set it uh, you know if there's ever any doubt especially with the encores it's so easy to check just stop and look it's you can get yourself in a lot of trouble with any muzzle loader uh, by double loading it. So we know this one's empty to load it. We just stick the module in there, close it up, pull it back, and fire it off. And you see the, the ejector kicks the module right out. We'll just pop off a couple. I'll show you the ejection, so it just pops it right out into your hand. to it. Set that back there. Alright, so depriming. Uh, we've got the universal deprime stand. A 16 inch punch. You just set the module there. Come in with the hammer. Give it a couple taps and the uh, primer pops out. Just like that. There we go. And then of course we'd go back and prime them, reprime them with the hand primer. Uh, how's the volume for everyone else? I, I'll try and talk a little louder, but I don't don't think there's much I can do. Sorry, Trent. Michael, gloves. That's a that's a good idea. Wearing gloves too. 
guessing primer burns would be uncomfortable on your hand. Uh, let's see, so we've, we've gone through uh, priming, uh, powder scales. Uh, I'm going to just step away a second and make sure my camera is still going. I don't good to go. I got 10 minutes left on my SIM, my SD card, so 4.30 I need to change the card. Alright, so powder scales. Uh, the way I like to do it, uh, I, well I'll be honest, I just bought a real high-end electronic scale I started to use, but prior to that uh, I always use this system. So I, it's just a Lee Beam scale. Uh, you use that to weigh out the, the appropriate charge. And the, the barrels, I send them with, with recommended loads. You don't, you know, that, that comes with the gun. You're not, you're not experimenting to find a, a safe load or a load that, that shoots well. So we can weigh out a charge there. And then if, if you like to, you know, if you're only shooting five or six shots a year deer hunting, you just get the beam scale. You know, if you want to go to the range and shoot 20 or 30 times, I like to get these uh, oops, perfect powder measures. Uh, so you use the beam sick gale to set it, but it's uh, you adjust the volume that it dumps this way. It's different than a black powder volume measure, though. You're you're actually verifying the the weight dumped with the scale. But then every there's a little stand here. You mount it to the back and set it up. But every time you pull the pull the lever, it dumps a full charge. So it's it's a real fast way of throwing a bunch of loads. It's pretty accurate. Uh, when I double check them, they're usually within two tenths of what I set it at. So for the ranges we shoot on course at, two tenths of a grain isn't uh, really going to make any difference. Uh, Travis, no, the little the little hammer doesn't come. But I mean, you can. You can use anything. I, I use the. A lot of the times, I forget my hammer, and I just use the side of my socket. It doesn't take much to to knock those primers out. Yeah, Justin, it's like it's pretty for a thirty-five dollar powder measure. It's really amazing how accurately they they throw powder. All right, let's see. Scope and rings. So the the pack the one package I offer this. Uh, oh wait, I never talked about weight. So this uh, this gun, I went ahead and threw it on the scale. Uh, prior to coming out here with the scope off, it's right at eight and a half pounds. So really not a bad carrying weight. Uh, maybe a little heavy for the mountains. With this, uh, this is a Vortex uh, Razor LH. Uh, it's like nine pounds, 10 ounces with the scope on and the uh, Vortex rings. Uh, four end is another question I get a lot. Can I use the factory four end? Uh, this, this is a fact, unmodified factory four end on here. You can see it, it bows down just a little bit uh, because of the heavier contour. If you wanted to, you can sand it out to make it fit a little better. I just bolt them on and they, they shoot just fine uh, in my experience. Uh, one other thing while we're talking about four ends is we do a dovetail uh, four end adapter instead of uh, a factory Encore barrel has 648 screws. Those strip out all the time. So we, we do uh, standoffs with a dovetail. Have yet to have anyone break one of those. I'm not. I'm sure it's possible, uh, but knock on wood, nobody's managed to tear one out yet. That'd be a pretty traumatic uh, injury to a barrel. All right. So scope and rings. Uh, like I said, I got a Vortex Razor LH. That's that's really a great little lightweight scope. I've probably got 200 shots on that scope. Maybe 250. A lot of different barrels I've used it on. Uh, it's held up really well. The, the, the package scope I offer on the website is this uh, Loophole VX5 HD. That's a 3 to 15 by 44 with the Fire Dot CDS, so illuminated turret. It does have the zero stop turret as well. Uh, if you want, well, I know a lot of guys, I'm not a huge fan myself of the yardage turrets since, you know, as soon as you move elevation or drastic change, change in temperature, you, you really need a, a different dial. But uh, if, you're, if you're a guy that likes a, a yardage dial, they come with a free dial from Leupold. Uh, definitely can get you all the ballistics uh, that you need to get that turret set up right. Uh, but like I said, nice locking zero-stop turret, really like that. Glass is real good. I haven't had anyone 
uh, break a VX5 HD or a VX6 HD in the last two years that I've been using them, so that's that's really impressive. Uh, oh, Richie, as far as how often the or how long the, the modules can go with with the Encore loads, I mean we're talking 30 plus shots, maybe even 50. Uh, it's until the primer pocket gets loose. Uh, the loads on these Encore barrels are are pretty moderate, so they they don't. Uh, stretch out those pockets very fast but one, once you find a the pockets not holding the primer very well if you're getting a little leakage around it then it's, then it's time to replace it uh, so besides loophole and vortex I, I'm also a night for Swarovski and Cowles dealer so if you know if you don't want to use a loophole or a vortex uh, I can help you out with with any of those other brands uh, let's see is there anything I'm missing break or not to break, uh, you can definitely get away without a break on these Encore loads. The, the typical load uh, we're running is a 275 grain bullet or a 300 grain bullet in the 2500 feet per second range, maybe a little over. It's about a 20 gauge slug gun. They're real mild uh, recoil. If you put a break on there, it's still not terrible without the break, but it's definitely uh, more fun to shoot with the brake. You are going to need hearing protection, of course, with the brake. Really, you should wear hearing protection whether or not you have a brake, but you really need it when you have a brake on. It'll it'll ring your ears. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so we've done the sizing. Uh, you saw how easy that was. One bullet. I brought I brought two bullets out. I was pretty sure I could do it in one, but I brought I brought a second as a backup. We didn't didn't even get into that one. Uh, primers uh, for the modules. It's uh, I like the CCI 250s, large rifle magnum primer, Federal 215s, the Winchesters. Those will all work. Uh, for the shotgun primers, it's uh, Federal 209A are the only ones I recommend. You definitely need a magnum primer with smokeless powder or Blackhorn 209. Uh, Winch everybody likes Winchester primers because they seal a little better. Uh, in, in most muzzle loaders, but the the issue with the Winchesters is they're just not hot enough. And everyone's like, well, I've I've shot my my muzzle loader a hundred times with Winchester primers, and you know sometimes you can get away with that. But on if you look at you know the I get a bigger sampling of a lot of customers, and if if you use Winchester primers, you are definitely opening yourself up uh, for a chance of a misfire. Uh, the way we seal the shotgun primers is. We actually set the headspace very precisely so the primer bottoms out uh, in the breech plug. That's really the only way to get a consistent seal with 209 uh, shotgun primers. So that's that's why we only recommend the, you know, the, the CCI 209M. The, those are also a magnum primer. Slightly different length than the Winchesters. So uh, sometimes they'll seal up, but we set the headspace uh, exactly for the, the Federal 209A. So that's why we recommend those. Let's see. Uh, all right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for the the encore information I had. You can see we we got through that in like twenty minutes. It's it's a super fast setup. Uh, these these guns shoot really good, right? It's a great question about accuracy difference between 209s and, and modules. Uh, I think you can get away with a wider range of fits in the barrel. When I, when I say fit, I'm talking about how the bullet goes down the barrel. The 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 module system is less less dependent on a consistent fit than the 209. Uh, the uh, the 209s, especially in cold weather, uh, you, you know, you do want a, a nice firm fit. Uh, a firm fit in real cold weather, I'm talking like 20 degrees below, or sorry, t below 20 degrees, single digits, you know, below zero, that type of weather. Uh, it's a good idea to have a tight fit with 209s or mo and modules for that matter, but I, I do see less susceptibility to, to variation with the modules, but you can, you can definitely tune a load with the with the 209s that, that shoots really well and when I say tune it's it's not necessarily the powder charge it's the the bullet fit in the barrel and else the barrels do come with the uh, Picatinny rail on there that's installed it's got the six screws uh, they do come with blue Loctite 
already in torque to specs. So you don't need to do anything to them. They're they're already uh, installed. But I guess with that, I'm gonna sign off. If no one else has any questions, um, thanks for everyone that joined. And we'll, uh, if you got any ideas for topics for the the next live video, uh, let me know. Uh, maybe we'll just do a general Q and A again, or. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm open to, to ideas, but thanks, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Appreciate you taking the time.